Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civilspedia team for the date 13th of September 2024. So the topics for discussion for today's video is about an article where uh, using the AI and in, in the healthcare system has its own advantages. So the article discusses on how to fullest efficient efficiency AI can be used uh, in healthcare system and this article is from the Hindu and the second article is is about the Manipur issue and the ongoing conflict between the Meitei and uh, the Kukia Naga community and uh, the prospects and aspects in related to it and this article is from the Indian Express. So before getting into the article's discussion, uh, there are a few announcements. To boost your UPSC mains preparation with us, All India UPSC mains open mock test series of 2024 would be starting so interested aspirants can apply for the test series so now without any much further delay let's get into the articles discussion so the article talks about the uh, interference of the ai that is the artificial intelligence in the healthcare uh, where uh, inclusion or the connection of these two can bring uh, transformative medical services for better diagnostics personalized treatment and uh, efficient uh, medical services but also at the same time using uh, ai can bring challenges like privacy cost uh, cost concerns and other ethical concerns so in light of the article first let us see the advantages of uh, using ai in the healthcare system first is having an uh, improvised diagnosis A inclusion of ai can help to analyze vast amount or large amount of medical data such as the reports of scans a lot of tests to have a early detect of the diseases for example uh, ai tool like ibm watson have shown potential in diagnosing uh, cancer by analyzing the medical literature or the patient's details or reports next is uh, ai been having the potential to bring a personalized medicine usage of ai helps to have plans or treatment plans based on the genetic makeup and genetic history of the patient thus there is a tailored treatment according to the needs of the patient individually so this precision diagnosis helps to have better outcome like how ai can predict the uh, heart attack using the data from the vitals of of a body such as the uh, blood pressure heart rate cholesterol levels and so on the next advantage is inclusion of ai will help in having a telemedicine and remote monitoring so ai powered apps are useful for home for a uh, remote access when it comes to medical services such as the home health monitoring patient's health condition would be checked at home and it reduces the frequent hospital visits and so on such as the virtu uh, virtual assistance for basic healthcare services such as the chatbots and other services like the appointment scheduling answering queries reminding patients to take their medicines and so on so such app based services would uh, help in the efficiency of taking healthcare more seriously for a con uh, of the population for a country like india next is the dr uh, drug discovery uh, ai helps pharmaceutical companies to discover new drug through uh, analyzing complex molecular components of our body or the requirements of the population thus this uh, prediction of drug new drugs will lead to the effectiveness of any uh, upcoming diseases or so so on and also it helps in the resistance control next is one of the most interesting uh, advantage when it comes to ai is to have robotic surgeries include inclusion of robots will help in assisting assisting for surgeons or any other minor surgeries and so on so there is precision and and uh, sometimes a human error can be avoided for example the da vinci surgical system and us based robotic system helps to assist in uh, delicate surgeries and so on like prostate cancer removal or heart surgeries and so on and last is the ai in the rural healthcare sector ai helps in bring uh, bridging the healthcare gap in rural areas that is the digital divide through the telemedicine through remote uh, diagnostic op opportunities and so on and there is better resource management so that everyone are able to afford healthcare in the country mobile applications can help for uh, diagnosis for the pregnancies tuberculosis and various other diseases which is very prevalent uh, for a country like india now let us move on to the uh, disadvantages of the ai in the healthcare 
first is the data privacy concern which is a major concern so there is a risk of data breaches and misuse of sensitive health information which can lead to privacy concerns and other corruptive activities for example in 2020 a sensitive uh, health medical report of the us was hacked and it it was used for inappropriate purposes so influence of the dark web can also lead to misuse of these data next is the high cost as a major concern expensive implementation for many hospitals is uh, can lead to cost increase especially con- uh, developing countries to have ai as well as an increase in the healthcare is such a task for them as there needs to be responsible resource management also next is the lack of human touch not having an experience a, a man made experience by a human can be superficial sometimes as ai lacks empathy and emotional intelligence thus it it can make a patient to feel alienated or dissatisfied because uh, for example in, in the process of anesthesia the doctor makes sure that the patient feels fine both mentally and physically but when it involves robotics and so on there isn't any connectivity between the patient as well as uh, healthcare system which would be providing medical services to the patient and next is finally the most common legal and ethical issues when an ai makes a mistake we won't know who is accountable for an ai medical decisions and who to held responsible also at the same time that is whether the healthcare that is whether the healthcare the developer or the machine in itself so we can never know who to blame when it, when any error occurs now let us have a way forward on to how to address the challenges of ai when it comes to the health sector first is to have a regulatory framework that is a policy intervention we need to have a developed regulations for the data protection as well as for the privacy concerns and ethical usage of ai so for example the national health digital mission in india uh, initiated by the government of india stands as a platform or an ecosystem system to safeguard the integration of ai in the healthcare and be aware of the data being collected next is having an inclusive data for ai training if uh, there are models or tools to be initiated we need to train that models or our tools on diverse data sets to avoid biases so that it can represent different and diverse populations so and it doesn't have one approach when it comes to uh, addressing medical queries and so on so this can lead to fairness and equal equality as well as equity when it comes to medical providing men, uh, medical services so having such diverse data can lead to have a, a global collaboration where there is inclusivity promoted next is to have a collaboration between humans and ai so as ai somewhere lacks sympathy ai can't be fully dependent where ai can be used as a tool to assist doctors but it can never replace human and their emotions attached to it uh, so as in any medical situations it should be the healthcare provider who gives the final decision and finally is to have a capacity building and training we need to train healthcare professionals to work with ai technologies we need to make them aware of the possibilities of its pros as well as cons when it comes to ai and uh, work diligently and work with ai responsibly so that it doesn't harm especially in a sector like health and medical uh, before that let us see a main question discuss the role of artificial intelligence in healthcare highlighting its potential benefits and challenges suggest ways to ensure ethical and effective implementation of ai in healthcare sector in india so it's a very simple and a very straightforward question where having a framework of advantages disadvantages and at the same time having a way forward can form the framework of the question so now let us see the answer formation according to this question so this article criticizes criticizes on how the indian government is not taking the manipur conflict seriously even though it has been going over more than 17 months so first let us see a mains question related to it analyze the historical and uh, socio political dimensions of the ongoing conflict in manipur discuss the key factors contributing to the unrest so in light of this question let us see the framework of this question in the light of the article first let us see the causes of the conflict that is the manipur conflict first reason is the ethnic tension the conflict involves tension primarily involves tensions between two groups that is the 
Meite, which is mostly Hindu, versus the Kuki or the Nagas, who are mostly Christians, where the Meite community live in the valley, uh, whereas the Kuki and Naga community live in the hill areas. And the tension is uh, when the Meite community started to demand the status of ST, which was being opposed by the uh, hill, hilly people region that is the Kuki and Naga. The next reason for the causes of conflict is the territorial dispute. Both the group that is the Meite and the Kuki and Nagas have concern over the land and resource conflicts. The uh, hilly region people feel that they are being marginalized by the uh, valley people that is the Meite community uh, whereas the Meites are uh, threatened by the tribal dominance also. The Kuki and the Naga community also feel that the political power of the Meitis is also one of the reasons for the conflict of the Manipur issue. Next is having a demographic concern. There is a fear of losing the identity and the land rights between both the communities. So thus, uh, both the communities are trying not to lose their rights over the te their territory and also protect the rights of the people of each community members. Next reason is the economic disparity. There is a large gap between the development and economic status between the hilly region people and the valley region people as uh, the tribal community are feeling more neglected when it comes to the development uh, aspect of the Manipur. Now let us move on to the challenges when it comes to this conflict. Uh, due to this conflict, it has led to violence and displacement of over 60,000 people and almost a lot of deaths also. There is a deep ethnic divide between the Metis, Kokis and the Naga community members, making uh, reconciliation and peace to be very very difficult. Next is the breakdown of law and order where even the armed groups, militias and the insurgent groups have failed to bring restore peace in the uh, in the state as well as among the government present. Next is the security and governance. There is a confusion on on the chain of command like uh, on who to give the order for peace and restoration among the chief minister of the state as well as the central government as there is no proper communication when it comes to the violence. Next is the usage of technology and misinformation. Tools like drones, anti-drone technologies, internet shutdowns have brought in serious question of uh, human rights violation and right to freedom eventually and finally is to have an impact on national security. Manipur is a very sensitive area as it borders Myanmar. So there are border security con concerns like the influx of refugees and so on. Then also it is prone to drug trafficking route and other insurgent activities. Now let us look at the steps taken by the government to, to face this issue. First is the security measures. The government has de deployed central forces to control the situation such through the unified command structure through the army to the paramilitary and other state policies and state police and so on. Next is to have a dialogue with the communities. There had been efforts made to bring in representatives of both the communities together to have peace talks and agreements and so on. Involvement of the Supreme Court. The intervention of uh, recommendation to include the Metis in the uh, steel list have become controversial as even though it is seen as a uh, development initiative it still brought violence as the as the uh, STs in the hilly sorry as these uh, tribes of the hilly region felt neglected again and next step is the having development initiatives there were a lot of economic packages and infrastructure projects being announced by the government for example the Jirimbam Impal railway line has been announced. Uh, it is a significant initiative to promote transportation as well as to boost the economic activity. And next projects like uh, skill development programs like the Dean Dayal Upadaya Grameen Kaushalya Yojana, a scheme which aims to uh, address issues like unemployment as well as underemployment. Now, after looking into the challenges and uh, the government initiatives and so on, let us see a way forward for this article on what needs to be what can be done to have a peace treatment uh, for this issue first is to promote dialogue uh, there needs to be building of trust among the communities so therefore it helps to facilitate discussions between the ethnic groups and so on so uh, there is involvement of members from all 
stakeholders. Next is to have a clear chain of command. First, we need to establish a proper governance structure on uh, which branch of command need to be addressed for the different problems and different queries of the diverse communities of the Manipur state and so on. So that there is fair representation of both the valley people as well as the hilly people. Next is to have an inclusive development uh, that is to address concerns of both valley and hill, hill region people in terms of all aspects that is social, economic, political, financial as well as human rights as well as human rights and so on. As largely women and children are being affected a lot and uh, and this leads to serious human rights violation concerns. Next is to protect ethnic rights. We need to ensure that there is security of cultural identity and land rights as India has a long history when it comes to cultural identity as well as uh, land recognition. So through policies and uh, laws, we need to respect their traditional outlook. Next is to strengthen security. Uh, this is such an important initiative as there need to be improved border security and uh, equipped or efficient ways to counter insurgent groups so that there is peace physically in an environment. And next is to have an information management to counter misinformation and rumors especially through social media. There needs to be policy regulation for the governance of internet so that people or anyone in power don't misuse the opportunity of having internet. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. And to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.